Yellowstone supervolcano, USGS, is now trying to predict the next super eruption with the help of NASA satellites. As we know, we had a sudden 6.5 magnitude earthquake and a very strong swarm, strong being that the aftershocks are uh, the highest being 4.6, and we had about 40 earthquakes, so they're still ongoing. 190 miles west in the area of uh, about the mountains of Boise, Idaho. As you'll see from the videos just before this one, there are nine volcanoes west of Yellowstone, and there are also eight volcanoes in Utah. That's where we recently had the 5.7 sudden earthquake in Salt Lake City. And both these areas, of course, are in the areas of the mantle plume and the magma that feeds Yellowstone as well. Now the 6.5 was big enough to be felt all the way up to Canada, Seattle, and I would venture to say all the way to uh, San Francisco, if not also Las Vegas, but people from there will have to leave a comment if they did feel, feel that. And um, it's still ongoing, but it did shake Yellowstone. It did shake Yellowstone. And uh, this is what the geologists had warned us about a few months ago, that the next volcano to uh, erupt most likely will be the one here next to uh, west of Yellowstone, the Craters of the Moon volcano in Idaho, which erupts like clockwork every 3,000 years, and they expect it, it will be another 1,000 years before it erupts, but that will be an ongoing eruption. It takes uh, 100 years or a thousand years of, of said eruption. So um, you can even see the lava flows there from um, Google Earth, how much lava comes out. But now concerning the way that NASA is helping U.S. predict and what they can view, what, can they, what they can see. Now the next eruption, how to predict it and how to see things coming, with the help of NASA technology, the Yellowstone caldera, as we know, gets its name as a supervolcano. It's the second largest supervolcano on the Earth. There are about 20 supervolcanoes, if not more. And uh, if it has a super eruption, it can have uh, a devastating global event. The satellite images taken by the Advanced Space Borne Thermal Emission and Reflection Radiometer, or ASTER for short, are helping scientists to be able to see where these hotspots are and where this rising magma is in order to warn geologists of any future events. Since 2004, Yellowstone National Park officials have been studying the thermal features around the park and they want to identify if the supervolcano has any signs of eruption. And one of them, of course, is the Thermal areas, what's happening to the areas that are getting hot, which means that magma is uh, coming into those areas. Now, thanks to the help of NASA, they're getting real-time information, revealing signs of a sudden temperature increase below the surface. We know that it's very the magma is very close to the surface in Yellowstone. If you're standing around, for, for example, uh, the geysers, okay, the uh, Old Faithful, the top of the roof of the magma chamber is only three miles down below the surface. Now, thanks to the help of NASA, they can get real-time information to find any signs of sudden rise in temperature under the surface. Greg Vaughn, United States Geological Survey, USGS, revealed this is technology and data that could be applied to any geothermal and volcanic areas around the world to monitor eruptions and maybe even predict volcanic activity. He said most volcanoes are not monitored until they erupt, and I want to get ahead of that. He says taking data manually is a difficult thing to do because yet Old Yellowstone is such a huge area. And he explains it's hard work, it's time consuming, and there are bears. Obviously, not only bears, but we also saw a very nice looking herd of bison, and you'll see that in the um, Yellowstone Old Faithful video that we took today, 
a blizzard condition up there, very lo a lot of snow, but the bison were there, like looked like 40 of them anyway, um, in the area of the Upper Geyser Basin, of uh, very close to the uh, Old Faithful Geyser. Of course, there was nobody walking around that area because of the, weathers of, the weather, of course. But he says it's hard work, time-consuming, and there are bears. The researchers are using thermal imaging from space. They're monitoring, uh, monitoring the roughly 10,000 geothermal features that are found in Yellowstone. 10,000 geothermal features, and it's got 60% of the world's geysers and the tallest one, Steamboat Geyser. Dr. Vaughn and his team takes images overnight to prevent picking up heat from daytime reflection of the sun from the rocks. Then they study them to see any areas, to find any areas of concern. Now we know Yellowstone had three eruptions in history in the area where it is now, 2.1 million years ago, 1.3 million years ago, and 640,000 years ago, which has led some to suggest another one is overdue. But researchers working for USGS stated this theory could not be further from the truth. As the website says, first of all, one cannot predict, predict, predict recurring intervals based on only two values. But for those who want to assist, you can do the arithmetic. The three eruptions occurred 2.1 million, 1.3 million, and 0.64 million years ago. The two intervals are thus 0.8 and 0.66 million years average, 0.73 million years interval. And again, the last eruption was 640,000 years ago, implying that we're still about 70 to 90,000 years away from a super eruption. Of course, we know that there have been smaller eruptions than a super eruption. 70,000 years ago, we had a lava eruption, and we've had 80 eruptions since then. So they're not all super eruptions. Now, uh, we cannot discount, he says, the possibility of another such eruption occurring sometime in the future, given Yellowstone's volcanic history and the presence of magma, which is always underneath Yellowstone caldera. And it was, it's not only under Yellowstone, as we saw before in the previous videos, the magma plume comes from Baja, the western part goes into San Andreas, the Walker Lane Fault System, where we have the high-threat volcano of California, and the eastern part of that branch of magma goes through um, Nevada up to Utah, where we have those eight volcanoes of Utah, where we had the, the 5.7 magnitude quake out of nowhere and the quake swarm going on. And then it goes up northeast to uh, Yellowstone. And that, ma that mantle plume, that magma, is also under the area where we had the Idaho earthquake of 6.5, the nearby uh, volcanoes next to west of Yellowstone. So yes, there's magma down there, and they said, uh, the you say previously revealed how researchers at the University of Utah were left stunned when they discovered and produced images of a reservoir of hot, partly molten rock 12 to 28 miles under the surface. The hot rock is in the chamber 4.4 times larger than the shallower, long known tunnel previously mapped out, according to their study. Xin Hua Wang, who led the research in 2015, said, for the first time we've imaged the continuous volcanic plumbing system under Yellowstone. And that includes, he says, the upper crustal magma chamber we've seen previously, plus a lower crustal magma reservoir that has never been imaged before, and that connects to upper chamber to the Yellowstone hotspot plume, hotspot plume below the reservoir. And despite beliefs that these magma chambers are not full of molten rock ready to erupt, instead it is mostly solid and sponge-like rock with pockets of magma. Jamie Farrell, who is the co-author of the paper, states that the discovery does not mean that Yellowstone is any closer to erupting. He said the magma chamber and reservoir are not getting any bigger than they have been, it's just that we can see them better now using these new techniques, that they've always been there. Fin Chi Lin, the, uh, another co-author, said that it gives us a better understanding of the Yellowstone magmatic system. We can now use these new models to better estimate the potential seismic and volcanic hazards. Okay, so at least they have this 
technique to help find out what's going on. Maybe they can use it to find out what's going on in Salt Lake City with those quakes and also in Idaho because, after all, they're part of the same mantle plume. This by Callum Hoare on Express UK. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.